welcome to Digital Stratosphere, the podcast. We provide independent and technology agnostic advice on how to help organizations through their digital transformation journeys. This show will help you dial in on what it takes to drive a successful transformation from high level strategies to the detail oriented practices that you may not have known otherwise. You'll learn best practices and premier strategies used by industry leaders who have driven millions of dollars in net positive business transformations. Over the next half hour, we'll cover things you need to know about your, tr your digital transformation. My name is Kyler Cheatham and I am your host today. Thank you so much for joining us. In today's episode, we're gonna go over exactly what are system integrators and how do they influence your digital transformation. Um, joining me for the conversation today is Adam Cheatham, Director of Transformation and Strategy here at Third Stage Consulting Group. Welcome, Adam. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, you bet. Um, before we dive in, I'd love to hear a little bit more about what you do here at the Third Stage, what your role is for our audience members that haven't met you. Yeah, so uh, my name is Adam Cheatham, Director of Strategy and Transformation at Third Stage Consulting Group. Uh, what I generally do is, uh, is help um, create teams at Third Stage that um, work with our clients to create successful digital transformation, um, starting at the very beginning. You know, we believe that a successful digital transformation starts with a great digital strategy um, and includes work streams from um, not just an executive buy-in and, and sponsorship, but also from a business process management and organizational change management, data management, and, and so many other work streams that need to be managed in parallel so that you are effectively using enterprise apps to accomplish your digital transformation goals. Excellent. And you are just in the U.S. or do you manage global projects as well? Yes. So um, I, I have projects and manage projects across the globe um uh, on all uh, on all continents excellent well we're so excited today for you to kind of give us some insight on what a system integrator does and how they create value or influence digital transformation projects so let's start from the beginning can you tell me a little bit about what a system integrator actually does within a digital transformation yeah, so a system integrator is somebody who is going to create the software environment that you seek to deploy. Um, they implement your software. Um, for the most part, they are more technically oriented and focused on getting software up and running. Um, sometimes that does include a little bit of conversation around what are your business goals and what are your change needs, um, but they are mostly focused on the technical aspects of uh deploying software interesting and so why do you have a system integrator instead of a vendor that just integrates your software yeah so there's um there there are a number of different role industry terms that should be kind of talked through on this for, for starters you have software vendors software vendors are companies that sell software oracle is a software vendor microsoft n4 SAP, QAD, um, anybody that will sell you software is a software vendor. Uh, now, in some cases, software vendors also implement their own software. So the um, Oracle and M4, for example, will implement some of their own software packages. And so they can also be your system integrator, or your implementer. Um, Further down the line, you may have software system integrators, companies that are that don't sell software but focus entirely on implementing it. Um, this is a pretty common model. Uh, Microsoft, for example, is entirely dependent on system integrators. You cannot hire Microsoft to implement your software, as at least as it pertains to ERP. Um, they've separated that out. So that's you. They're dependent on a large network of system integrators that that you buy your software from Microsoft, and then you pay a pay a third party system integrator to configure it and deploy it for you. Um, you also have VARs, value added resellers, who um, play a different number of different roles. They don't sell software as it pertains to core ERP packages. But what they do is they sell add-ons. Um, 
in the food and beverage industry, for example, this is pretty common where you buy, you buy a, a software package that uh, from a, a value-added reseller who has their own in, intellectual property that is embedded within the software. It looks like the software, it acts like the, the software that you purchased from say, for example, Microsoft, um, but it also includes some industry uh, terminology and, and like um, that is designed to make the software feel more like it was created for a more niche industry. Um, metals accelerators are another good one. Um, we've evaluated for some of our larger steel clients, um, uh, metals accelerator software packages where um, the core ERP system includes um, units of measure and descriptions and part numbers and IDs that are unique to the metals industries. So those types of things. Excellent. Well, thank you for that overview. There were some in there that I've never even heard of. So that was really informative for me. Um, what are some examples of system integrators? Um, yeah, so some examples of system integrators. Uh, anybody that implements software can be uh, considered a system integrator. Um, Oracle is a system integrator. Um, Accenture and Deloitte and, and, um, are system integrators. They implement um, software packages. Uh, you'll also hear uh, of a number of different smaller companies um, that are, are integrators that are more oriented towards niche industries and applying a, a software packages strengths to each of those industries. Um, you'll often find even if there isn't a value added reseller component to it, um, food and beverages is, is an industry that system integrators are a bit more capable than the overall vendors in a lot of cases. Um, so it's um, an example of a system integrator really is in, um, any company that will help you implement software. Gotcha. From the technical and, perspective. Okay, excellent. Um, and do they, do they vary depending on business and project size, kind of like software vendors would do as well? Yeah, and there's a bit of a... Um, there's a lot wrapped up in that question, so I'll kind of take it bite by bite. Um, some software vendors will um, will push uh, process, prospective clients off to their system integrator network, depending on size. Um, Epicor, for example, um, in a lot of cases, they like to push um, any client that is under the $50 million revenue mark um, to, to their system integrator network so that they can have a more intimate experience with their system implementer. Um, on the flip side of it, if you're quite a lot larger, Epicor is more likely to say, we're going to take that on because we wrote this software and we use this software. And so being able to do that for a large company is meaningful. Um, you also find that, um, that depending on area and locale, um, the uh, industry um, and, and software package, uh, what you're looking for, will also drive um, whether or not a software vendor wants to take on your project as an implementation for themselves or to, um, to farm that out to one of their system integrators based on your, your software needs. Gotcha. Yeah, that, there is a lot wrapped up in that. So just to kind of unpack that a little bit more. So Adam, can the same system integrator help with an ERP full service solution as well as a more best of breed type of system or do they have specific verticals that they specialize in? Again, this is a pretty diverse industry on the whole and a pretty diverse market. So the answer is it depends. Um, let's say, for example, you buy Infor and Infor CRM. There's a high likelihood that the same integrator will implement both of those packages for you. But let's say for uh, you, you do something different. We recently had a client that went with um, Microsoft ERP, Salesforce CRM, and a, um, I forget off the top of my head, but a different HCM package. Mm -hmm. uh, what you start looking at in those spaces is a different vendor and different system implementer for each, um, at which point you should be heavily considering um, some assistance in managing that that uh, kind of conglomeration of systems and, 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 and implementers to help you keep them all straight and keep them all on the same path. 
um, because they will all only have their own software's interests at heart, um, which is fine. That's okay. You should expect them to focus on their project, project as opposed to everybody else's. But having somebody that can help you keep all of those ducks in a row so that you know when um, your ERP vendor and, and, and system implementer and your um, EDI implementer are working together so that you deploy, deploy together on time. Gotcha. And, and what should clients expect from their system integrator? What, what are some expectations that would be typical to look for? Um, so from a perspective of the, the more purest system integrators, you should, um, or it's just the, the smaller companies or the, the companies that focus just on the software, clients should expect their, um, their partners in that space to focus on helping them implement software that fits their business requirements and needs. Um, what I mean by that is helping them understand how the software must be built and then going and configuring it to do so, helping identify areas where customizations could be warranted and then scoping and deploying those customizations. Um, what they won't do and what they will tell you that they do is organizational change management and business process management. Um, and the reason for that is twofold. From a change management perspective, system integrators are, um, heavily consider change management to be, this is your process before, this is your process today, here is your document for using today's process, that is change management. We have managed the change. That's not organizational change management. It is uh, technically can be considered, you, you can use those words to describe it, but organizational change management is not something that system integrators do, um, at least not frequently, and is more oriented towards, now that we know what the change is, let's lean into that and help your team understand how their pro uh, processes are gonna be different what it is um, they need to do to be able to use the software effectively during those differences, having conversations about when you decide not to customize software, what your process is going to have to be in the software itself and what that change looks like and how folks can then learn to use the system, adopt the system and become effective within it. The other thing that they do, don't do particularly well is um, understanding the difference between what um, what the impacts are of a an out of the box solution versus a custom solution. Um, there, uh, there's a um, a software bias I think for everybody to say my software can do anything, mm -hmm. and that's why I work for them. Good for you. I'm really glad that you had that pride in your software. But just because it can do anything, because you can make it do anything, doesn't mean that it should. Right. So the question becomes, I want the software to do this one different thing. Um, and your, your configuration team is going to say, okay, that's a customization. And if you wanted to do that, that um, their role stops there. And they pass you over to a group of developers whose role is to scope out and develop that custom solution. Um, what's missing in between those is, should we do this at all? Not can it be done, should it be done? And um, what you miss in this in this handoff is the consult the business consultants who are um, responsible for configuring your software identify customization and then they they wash their hands of of that conversation and they pass it off. So before that pass off happens is when you should be talking to somebody, uh, a third party, um, you know quality assurance firm or project management firm that can help you understand what are the consequences of customizing that software? Because at some point you're gonna to have to recustomize it to keep up with updates. Um, okay, so we can customize that. Or what if we just did it the way the software does it? Do we need this customization? Does it add value? Those questions um, don't get asked by the, the system integrator consultants and they certainly don't get asked by the developers because by that point, the developer's job is to say, I need to make the software do this. And so that is what I will do. I will make the software do that. And you as the client get a bill for the expensive customization that you asked for and miss the opportunity to have the, cost, uh, the conversation as to whether or not that money is well spent at all. 
Yeah, I think that that's so important in kind of that concept that we preach a lot here at Third Stage is letting your strategy lead the technology and not the other way around. Um, so that was a lot of really great information. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, Adam and I are going to reveal more ways in which your system integrator can benefit this overall conversation. If you are involved in any sort of digital transformation or business change initiative, you'll want to download the 2021 Digital Transformation Report. With its comprehensive overview of business and technology trends and best practices, this report is a must-have guide for any transformation project or executive team. Download this free report by visiting Third Stage Consulting at thirdstage-consulting.com. You can also visit our website to learn more about us or download independent reports, videos, and other best practices. Again, visit thirdstage-consulting.com today to learn how you can take your transformation to the third stage of success. Welcome back to Digital Strategy Podcast. I am Kyler Cheatham speaking with Adam Cheatham, name share there for anyone that didn't pick it up the first time <laughs> from Third Stage Consulting about system integrators and how they can fit into your business and influence your digital transformation. So we kind of scratched the surface of what is a system integrator, what do they do, what to expect from them in the beginning of our episode. Um, and I'd like to kind of learn a bit more about what our audience should look out for when speaking to a system integrator. Um, so let's let's dig into kind of the evaluation process for a system integrator. What are some considerations that our listeners or organizations should be mindful of when choosing an SI? Yeah, so um, first and foremost, it's uh, their ability to understand their own software package and implement it well. Um, you know, you can have the right software package and implement it badly, and you're in a catastrophic failure. So having a partner in an SI who can implement that software well because they understand it, they have the experience behind it, is very, very important. Um, just as important is your cultural fit with them. You know, what's um, what we haven't touched on yet and should kind of consider a little bit is that your system, your relationship with your system integrator doesn't end when you go live. Okay. It more or less continues for the duration of your use of that software. When you need upgrades to that software in the future, when you want to add users, when you want to um, create an API to, to interface with some other homegrown whatever or a new software system, like you want to add a CRM, you're going to work with that system integrator again and again and again. That should, you should expect that relationship to last a decade or more. So what you want is a partner that fits, um, somebody whose size is meaningful to you. Um, if, you're, um, if you're a small company and you want to implement with Accenture, um, that's probably, you're going to be a small fish in their very, very large pond and they are not gonna pay attention to you. You're not gonna be as important to them as some of their more massive clients. On the flip side, there's, a, there's still a benefit to that as well because you get the benefit of the work that they do for all of those other large companies that might trickle down to you. So there's a, there's a flip side there. Uh, um, the converse of that conversation is you might decide to implement with a, um, a system integrator that's a bit smaller is a bit um, a bit more of a niche fit for your culture as a company, and you might be a bit bigger fish in their pond. And so, when you need something, they're more likely to respond, um, and they're more likely to respond in a manner that's cost effective for you, as opposed to the big four approach to just throwing bodies at it. Um, the flip side of that, of course, is that um, you're um, you're attached to them from a perspective of capacity. And they just don't have the weight to carry, mm -hmm. carry on some of the other things that might be benefits of hitching your wagon to a larger star. So there's some considerations there when it comes to culture and their ability to understand your needs. Also, you should understand whether or not you are a vanilla kind of manufacturing company or whatever fit you are in your industry, or whether or not you're a bit more of a niche, um, a niche company. And that's important because you want them to understand your business. 
when they understand your business, then they're going to have more to more value to add on how it is you can use your software, uh, their software for your business. Um, so building on that cultural fit, what are some of the risks associated if you do hire a system integrator that isn't the right fit for your business? Uh, part of that is one of the biggest risks is increased costs. You know, that um, their consultants are going to bill you by the hour. And if it takes them four hours to figure something out that uh, that uh, company that is a better fit for you would have figured out in one, you just paid for three hours that um, maybe you didn't need to. Um, so that's one of the risks there. Um, I'd say that the, uh, to, to reorient the question and say, what are the risks of choosing the wrong system integrator on the whole? Um, choosing a system integrator who can't uh, implement their own software choosing a system integrator who hasn't done this frequently enough to understand your industry. These are all things that um, are, are red flags and you should get a little bit of a feel for that in demonstrations, as well as implementation planning and negotiations. Today, particularly, I highly, highly recommend you demand to meet the project resources they are proposing to be on your team. Um, today, I'm finding more and more the folks in the sales cycle are only there to sell software. And even the ones that are like, yeah, this guy's a PM. He helps run our, um, our projects at the professional services level. Um, he's still just there to help sell the software to you so that then they can get you a different PM. Um, so you want to be very focused on what your team is there and whether or not they can handle your needs so that you can understand whether or not this system integrator is the right one for you. Yeah, definitely. That that makes a, a lot of sense. When when we talk about system integrators, I know we've put out a lot of com content on those kind of tier two system integrators and, and why it's important to include them in your evaluation process. Can you can you kind of explain to us what maybe a tier two system integrator might bring as far as value to your project? Let's say maybe the larger big four don't. Yeah, those smaller system integrators, the biggest thing is the focus and the attention that's catered towards you. Um, you know, the, there's, a, there's a sense of, um, you know, if you're using a big, uh, a big firm, uh, there are a couple of ways of thinking through that. First and foremost, the big four are, um, they're going to throw bodies at it. And that's, that's going to be their first solution is to throw bodies at it. They're, technically, they're going to throw bodies at it before you have challenges and questions. Um, because that's their business model. Um, but overall, when you have a challenge that they need to fit in need, bodies are sometimes a good thing. They're sometimes prohibitively expensive. Um, the other side of it, even if the tactic isn't to throw bodies at it, you are going to get somebody who is a finance-focused um, uh, consultant and a supply chain-focused consultant and a, and a sales-focused consultant from some of the larger organizations who are going to see your business as it happens in silos. Um, and the, and the, the reason for that is just because they, they need a larger team to implement their software, that's their business model. So they split things up. Um, smaller system integrators are more likely to create a more intimate relationship with you and your team to be able to see you holistically, where you may have somebody who, put, who wears multiple hats as far as roles are concerned, Somebody, for example, might be an, um, an expert in both finance and manufacturing is one of your team members from the system integrator side. For some clients, that's a real benefit. For other clients, um, trying to have that broad nature um, of the experience is, is not what they need. They need somebody more specialized. So there's some trade-offs here and there. Yeah, so it sounds like really defining what your needs are as a business um, is you know, so important and choosing the right system integrator, which you mentioned in our, our considerations conversation. Um, switching gears to some red flags. What are some red flags that our listener, listeners should be aware of when evaluating system integrators to make sure that they're you know, looking out for anything that they should be concerned within the kind of interview or evaluation process? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and there are a few of them that I, I'd like to mention. First, the first and foremost one is system integrators that actively dodge your questions. Um, I recently had a system integrator um, who client was up front, um, and this is several months ago, so um, 
you know, uh, a little bit different of, a, of, a, of an experience, but the client was up front. We want to be live on January 1st. We'd like to see what your project plan looks like for January 1st. Um, and the more they asked about that, the more the system integrator dodged it. You know, it's like, well, you know, we'll get you that. Uh, we'll get your project plan outline is active. They, it got to the point where they were actively dodging that question. You can ask it every day and they're not going to give you a different answer, which is we'll get to that. Um, and if you haven't gotten to it yet, you're not going to. Um, that particular client just came out and, uh, uh, and found out that that system integrator, um, while they were saying, yeah, we could probably do that. We'll get you a date later. Um, the, the date they were given recently was June 1st. Little different, huh? Little different. So, you know, those, those types of things were actively dodging a question is a massive red flag. But there are some other subtleties that you should, you should look out for. One of them is as you have software demonstrations, make sure that this client, this software vendor and implementer is trying to earn your business by expressing a, an interest in it and an understanding of it. You don't want them to show up and go through the motions and demonstrate how it is their software builds bicycles or stereos or whatever the go-to um, absolutely worthless example is as it pertains to software. They should show, show you what their software looks like when they build your products and if they're not asking for things like demo data that um, sample bombs sample purchase orders uh, sample client uh, and customer files so that they can make their their software relevant to you that's a red flag that means they're going through the motions mm -hmm. um, last minute changes from on this in the sales cycle are always red flags um, as are um, anybody who is more willing to trash their competition rather than show why it is they're the more effective product for you. Um, and trust your gut, trust your feeling on it and, and, and lean into it. Um, these, there's no slicker sales person on planet Earth except maybe the used car, secondhand car salesman um, than a software salesman. They, they know all of the objections. They know all of the answers that are going to make your mind think, all right, that's going to work for me um, because they know how to, uh, to manipulate the wording to make it sound like what you want to hear, but not technically give you what it is you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, overall, especially these days um, when we were finding so many system integrators can't staff their own projects, let alone um uh prove that they have the team behind it keep keep an eye on those things ask the questions and if you don't get the answers ask them again you know ask for that go live date that project schedule because if that's an important thing to you you should get the answer absolutely those are some um great things to be aware of and, and i think a lot of times clients and our our listeners aren't aware that they can actually ask those questions that they have that power to make their own decisions and really own their product um, and projects. So on, on that note, kind of building on that, we, we brushed over kind of the industry bias. Um, and you mentioned that system integrators can have some of that bias. Um, can you elaborate on that a little bit and then and maybe give us some tactics on, on how we can overcome or understand that bias? Yeah, um, so, the easiest way of framing that is the system integrator who wants to be a selection firm and considers their selection services as a, as early business development for their system integrator services. Um, they'll tell you all kinds of, yeah, you know, we're independent, um, you know, and, and so we're going to help focus this on your needs. And then you go and click through their website and they sell software. Um, I can tell you for free what their short list is going to be. Uh, <laughs> you can find out on your own. They don't, they're, they're only interested in selling you the software that they sell. Um, so as you start thinking through this, as far as a bias is concerned, when you're thinking about recommendations from software, uh, from system integrators, you can assume that that's because they're familiar with their software packages. And that's fine, that's normal, right? Like it's um, it's normal to say, well, I've, I've, I mean, I, I implement our software. I've seen it be successful in a number of environments. 
Um, but that doesn't mean they've seen it be successful in your environment. Mm -hmm. And so focus on your needs because just be, um, you know, the, the industry accelerators, the competitors of yours that use um, NetSuite um, and, and, and um, the competitors of yours that use Salesforce or this, that, or the other, those are, yeah, those are certainly indicators and data points, but they're not as meaningful as your needs. And what it is is different about your company. Um, just because somebody else uses a different package doesn't mean that's the right package for you. The same way best practices aren't the same for everybody. They're, they're individualized to each company. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you for sharing all of that insight. Any final thoughts that we didn't cover that you'd like to share with our audience about system integrators? If you're feeling over your head on this, reach out to somebody that can help, somebody that's independent and unbiased on it. Um, because the last thing you want to do is start, is ask for help from somebody that already has a pre-conceived uh, answer for you. Um, look for help. Don't be afraid to ask for it. Even if it's as a sounding board to somebody to say, hey, you know, what do you think about this out of the other? Um, you know, the third stage does this very well, but there, uh, there are also opportunities in a number of spaces, industries and the like that that you can look for help on how it is you approach this and, and how it is uh, you can be successful with it. Great point. And speaking of other resources, if our listeners today want some additional resources or more information on system integrators, um, where could they find something like that? Yeah, so um, our webpage, our LinkedIn channel, our, our YouTube channel, all of these are great sources of information. Of course, the podcast that you're listening to, to right now, um, also feel free to reach out to me directly or any of our directors and consultants for, for questions uh, on this type of thing. We'd be happy to talk to you about it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Adam, for being here today. We really appreciate all your great best practices and time. Of course, thanks for having me. Yeah, and thank you all for listening. My name is Kyler Cheatham, and we'll see you next time on Digital Stratus Group Podcast. Mm -hmm.